Alternate tunings are one of the best tools in your arsenal to help you get creative on the guitar and even learn how to navigate the fretboard. But alternate tunings can be super intimidating. Well, today you're gonna kiss intimidation goodbye. In today's show, you're gonna learn all you need to know about open D minor tuning so you can open up an entirely new creative pathway on your guitar. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 210 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. And happy Halloween, well, happy early Halloween to you. Halloween just so happens to be my favorite holiday of them all, so I wanted to make sure you have the happiest, spookiest, creepiest Halloween you possibly could. This show is all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC family members. Have you ever felt like life was just stomping on you? Like every direction you looked, things just weren't going the way that you wanted them to? Well, TAC family member Kathy felt the exact same way. And today she's gonna share why the guitar is a keystone in her life and how the guitar offered solace during a really difficult phase. You're also gonna get a sneak peek at what guitar lick the TAC fam is working on this week. It's entitled Tin Man, and it just so happens to be an open D minor tuning pretty cool. Today's show is all about D minor tuning. The tack lick is in D minor tuning. Coincidence? Maybe. I don't know. Plus, you're going to get your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use, which includes my favorite beverage of all time, coffee, and a fitting tribute to one of the greatest songwriters to ever write a song, and so much more. But first, let's go ahead and get spooky and learn all about open D minor tuning. You'll notice I brought along my Mule Mavis today because Halloween is approaching, open D minor tuning is spooky, and you can pull some downright spooky tones out of the Mule Mavis. It's a match made in heaven, or well, H-E double hockey stick, again, since Halloween is approaching. So the first step in exploring open D minor tuning is to tune your guitar to a D minor chord, so that when you strum all six strings, it sounds like, well, a D minor. Now you're gonna notice something here. Open D minor tuning is not that different from open D major tuning. There's only one single note that's different, and I'll tell you which one that is when we get there. So let's go ahead and start tuning your guitar. You're gonna take your low E string and tune it down to a D. Your A string is gonna stay the same. Your D string is gonna stay the same. The G string is gonna to drop to an F natural. Okay, and this is what differentiates D minor tuning from D major tuning. If we were tuning to D major, we would take that G string and drop it to an F sharp. But since we're going to D minor, we need to flat that third and turn it into an F natural. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, Tone, what is the numbers, what is happening here? It's okay, if you haven't been exposed to chord intervals and the one, three, five thing or the first, third, and fifth thing within a chord, don't worry about it. Just take the G string and drop it to an F natural. For those of you who understand chord intervals and things like that, what we're doing is taking the major third and dropping it to a minor third. It's as easy as that. Uh, and then you're gonna take, uh, let's carry on with the tuning here. You're gonna take your B string, drop it to an A note and your high E string, you're gonna to drop to a D note. So from low to high, we have D, A, D, F, A, D. And when you strum all that together, it sounds like a beautiful, sad, spooky D minor chord. So the next step in exploring this tuning, this open D minor tuning, is to play a D minor scale on the high D string. In fact, it's really cool because you have three different D strings here. So the fretted positions that I'm gonna show you, you can replicate on any of those D strings. So here's the quick scale and then we'll break it down fret by fret. So let's go ahead and go over those fretted positions so you can understand where to put your fingers. Now, in terms of which finger I'm using, it's not really, I'm not that particular because all we're doing is fretting a single string. So really whatever finger is comfortable for you to fret with, that's the one I want you to use. And if you wanna mix it up a little bit, use your index, middle and ring and pinky, uh, you can go ahead and do that as well. So the fretted positions for this D minor scale are as follows. Again, on the high D string, we have open, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, eighth fret, 
10th fret, 12th fret. So this is a scale that you're gonna have a ton of fun experimenting with, and that's what I wanna encourage you to do. Part of digging into D minor tuning is to explore it and get creative. So now that you know this D minor scale, what can you do with it? Well, first of all, just play it. It's really fun because it has this wonderful emotion, spooky, sad, whatever you wanna call it. It has this, this emotional pull that the major scale simply does not. Once you move past just experimenting with the different fretted locations, what I want you to do is start using the low D string as a bass accompaniment. And that could sound something like this. Doesn't have to be crazy, you're just using that bass string as some accompaniment, some uh, a way to fill out the sound, if you will. And again, just using those uh, D minor scale notes on that high D string. And again, remember, you can replicate those fretted positions on any of the D strings. If you wanna use that middle D, go ahead. If you wanna do it on the low D string, you can do that as well. Okay, so the next step in exploring this tuning is to figure out some chord shapes because the first question is usually, how do I get into the tuning? The next question is, what do I do when I get into the tuning? And then finally, it gets to the point where you're like, okay, what about chords? How the hell do I play chords in this tuning? Well, let's go ahead and do that right now. Moving into chords in open D minor tuning is actually a lot easier than you think because we're just gonna target three strings. Why? Because there are only three unique notes in this tuning, D, F and A. You have multiple D strings and you have multiple A strings. So any fretted position on either of those D or A strings, you can mirror on any other D or A string. So let's just go ahead and target those unique notes. Again, D, F, and A. And for us, it's really convenient because they're located right next to one another. We have that middle D, the F, and the A. Now, this is gonna get even more simple because we're only gonna be looking at three distinct chord shapes. A minor chord shape, a major chord shape, and a diminished chord shape. And I'll show you how they relate and kind of play out across the neck. But first, let's just go ahead and go over the shapes because, well, you're gonna to wanna to get your fingers kind of oriented and familiar with these shapes. And I think they're gonna be a lot easier than you might be working up in your mind. So for the minor chord shape, we're simply gonna bar a fret across the D, F, and A strings. I'm gonna start at the fifth fret right here. Because this is a minor tuning, anywhere we bar will be a minor chord. At the fifth fret, we have a G minor. The seventh fret, we have an A minor. How do I know that? Well, I'm referring to what note I'm fretting on the D string to name the chord. This is a G note. I'm gonna make the major or the minor shape. It's a G minor chord. This is an A note. I'm gonna make the minor shape, it's an A minor chord. Conversely, let's look at the major chord. The major chord is quite simple. I'm gonna again start at the fifth fret here just so you can hear the difference. It's basically like making a D-shaped chord in standard tuning, again in D minor tuning across the D, the F, and the A string. So you'll be fretting the fifth fret of the D string with your index finger, the sixth fret of the F string with your ring finger, and your middle finger is gonna to drop to the fifth fret of the A string. You have a nice flowery, beautiful major chord. Now again, this is one note different from our minor chord shape. Check this out. G minor, G major. Pretty cool. And of course, since there are no open strings here that I'm playing, I'm just targeting the D, F, and A string. I can move this around. If I wanna make an A major chord, again, I can make an A major chord. All I'm referring to to name the chord is the note that I'm fretting on the D string, in this case it's an A, and the chord shape. A major shape, A major chord. A minor shape, A minor chord. 
Now, there's one uh, lost chord shape that we're gonna go over very quickly here, just for the sake of knowing the naturally occurring chords in D minor, just so we can reach this completion point, and that is the diminished chord shape. You may not use this one all that much, but I figured it was worth a mention. So we're gonna start over by the headstock. Your index finger will be fretting the very first fret of the A string. Your middle finger will fret the second fret of the F string and your ring finger will fret the second fret of the D string. This is actually just like an A minor chord shape in standard tuning. But since we're in D minor tuning, this is actually a diminished chord shape. It's actually kind of spooky. It's quite fitting that we're doing this right before Halloween. I actually really like this chord. But what chord is it? Well, let's go ahead and refer to what note I'm fretting on the D string. It happens to be an E note. It's a diminished chord shape. It's an E diminished chord. So we have the three chord shapes. We have the minor chord shape, simply barring the strings. We have the major chord shape, and then we have the diminished chord shape. Now that we know those three chord shapes, I wanna go ahead and go over the naturally occurring chords in D minor, because they'll be the most useful in this tuning. Again, we're sticking to the D, F, and A strings. You know all the shapes, so I'm gonna go through these rather quickly. We have D minor, all open strings. We have E diminished. We have F major. We have G minor. We have A minor. B flat major. C major. And then it repeats at D minor. And what's great about these chords, and since we're in open D minor tuning, we can strum everything and still just fret the D, F, and A string. Check this out. It's just a great way to explore this tuning. Again, with a little bit more knowledge and a little bit more confidence in you know what chords you're actually making. Okay, one final step when it comes to open D minor tuning, and that is being creative. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a technique that you can use over the fretted positions that you already know to create some musical passages. Some of your own creations that, well, will be very spooky by nature of this key. Okay, so first the technique. On our fretting hand, or rather on our picking hand, all we're gonna be doing is hitting the low D string with our thumb, the index finger is gonna hit the F string, middle finger the A string, the high A, and your ring finger the high D. Okay, and you're gonna do this in a pattern where it goes thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. Sounds very Metallica-y, very nothing else matters-y, if I can coin those phrases. So again, that's thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index. Once you get that, what I want you to do is take those fretted positions that you know from the chords and simply play them. Lay down the fretted positions and do that exact same pattern. Now, since we're not playing that middle D string, you can just focus on the fretted positions of the F and the A. That'll sound like this. Pretty darn cool. It's almost like uh, we're visiting Dracula or something like that. Now that's with the little pieces of chords. You can also do that same technique with the individual scale notes, and that sounds really cool as well. Let me go ahead and give you a quick sample. I hope you enjoyed exploring that tuning. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I hope that it opens up a whole new creative pathway for you. In fact, in the comments below, let me know how you like open D minor tuning. Is it something that you really dig and maybe you could see yourself using it in the future or did you find it a little weird? Either way, I wanna know. Also, in the comments below, I wanna know something that is 100% non-guitar related. 
And that is, what's your favorite horror movie? It's Halloween, people. Halloween Eve is upon us. Halloween Eve and Halloween Day. So in the comments below, let me know your absolute favorite horror movie if you happen to be a horror movie lover. For me, it's a tie between Sleepaway Camp and Army of Darkness. But again, in the comments below, let me know your favorite horror movie. It's time for the Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge. Go ahead and keep your guitar in open D minor tuning because today's lick actually utilizes open D minor tuning. It's as if somebody planned it that way. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Tuesday Tack Guitar Lick Challenge, what's that all about? Well, within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, every single day is dedicated to one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Mondays, we work on a technique challenge. Tuesdays is a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays is an improvisation challenge. Thursdays is a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays is a chord transition challenge. It's Tuesday, it's Acoustic Tuesday. And since Tuesday, are dedicated to guitar licks, I thought, well, here's a sneak peek at what the Tack family is working on this week. Today's guitar lick challenge is entitled Tin Man. In fact, everything within Tack this week has a Wizard of Oz theme. You've got Tin Man, you've got Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion. And each of these individuals has a very sad, sad story. And that's a great segue into the musical theme this week, and that is open D minor tuning. D minor, the saddest of all keys. Somebody said that once in a great movie. Anyways, yes, the, the musical theme this week within TAC is open D minor tuning, and there's a technique paired along with that as well, and that is the dead thumb. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in today's guitar lick. So without further ado, here is Tin Man. Kind of a spooky, sad lick. Between the dead thumb and open D minor tuning, it's a recipe for ultimate sadness. Now, if you want to learn this lick note for note, all you have to do, TAC fam, is go ahead and log in. This is your challenge for today. It's Tuesday. Tuesday is Guitar Lick Challenge Day. Just go ahead and hit Start Challenge off of your home screen, and boom, you'll be right in the teaching video. Once you get comfortable with it, you can move on to the Play Along video, and don't forget to click on the tab icon in the lower right-hand corner, and you can open up the tab in a separate window, and this way you've got the teaching, you've got the tab, you got the Play Along, boom, bam, biggity, you've got the whole darn thing. Okay, so this lick in a musical context. How can you actually use this? And I kept thinking about this. This isn't some sort of, you know, solo lick that you would use, although I think where this shines is solo guitar. If you listen to any of the old time blues players, they use this technique, the dead thumb, where literally the thumb just rides along that low string, a nice steady pace. It doesn't seem like much, but it creates this wonderful bed of rhythm that's key centric because it's, well, within the key, it's a D note. So it's just this constant D note. They call it pedaling the bass or dead thumb. And what that allows you to do is play melodies over it. And this is exactly what this lick does. It maintains the dead thumb and allows you to play melodies over it. So this is an example of just one melody that you could play with this particular guitar lick with this particular style. So what I'm gonna do is use it in a musical context. I'm gonna musically use this guitar lick so that you can see that dead thumb in action. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the lick and then keep that dead thumb going to maintain the rhythm and then I'll play the lick again. Now what I want you to think of as I'm doing this is, okay, this is one way to add melody. How else could I add melody while I'm playing this lick or while I'm playing in this particular tuning? Yes, I went off the rails a little bit there towards the end, but I wanted to do that to emphasize the fact that you could take a small portion of this lick 
and repeat it to great effect. And I wanna encourage you to do that very thing. I also wanna encourage you to not play this lick the way I presented it. This is a wonderful way to start getting familiar with open D minor tuning. This is a wonderful way to start learning how to accompany yourself in fingerstyle guitar. Keep that nice steady bass going, keep that dead thumb going, and start adding melody notes on top of it. If you're looking for examples, look to the old time blues, specifically Mississippi Hill Country blues, because there's a lot of droniness within that style of music, and you'll hear that dead thumb going and those melody notes popping off the high strings. Now, one quick thing, you know, so often guitar players get asked, they get handed a piece of tablature and they get asked, hey, can you play this? And the answer is either yes or no. And if it's yes, you feel like you're king of the world, king or queen of the world. You think, yes, I passed the test. I can play this piece of tab. And if the answer's no, you feel like, ah, oh, I can't. I, maybe I failed this test. But I wanna encourage you to find the gray area. It's not as simple as a yes or a no. If you're learning something off of a piece of tablature, I want you to adjust it to what you like the sound of. Maybe what's written note for note doesn't really jive with you and you wanna take it in a different direction. Do that, it's okay, and that's still a win. I don't want you to, to think of it in black and white terms of, yes, I passed, no, I failed. Make that tab work for you. Remember, you're making music. You're not just simply reciting something that's printed out on tablature. Make music, and if something that you're learning off of tab launches you into a creative world that you've never experienced before, that's good, that's worthy of celebration, and that's worthy of following. They call that following the muse, and I encourage you to do that very thing. I've said quite a few times on the Acoustic Tuesday show that the guitar has helped me through some very difficult times in my life. It's been a constant companion, and that seemed to resonate because there have been numerous comments on previous shows saying that exact thing, saying, hey man, the guitar's been there through some really rough times for me. Thank goodness for the guitar. Well, TAC family member Kathy just experienced that very thing. In fact, on the most recent Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party, I had posed the question, hey, what's something that could have derailed your guitar routine but didn't? Well, it turns out that Kathy was going through a difficult phase in her life and the guitar was there for her. Here's what she had to say. Hi, um, I, um, I have undergone some changes in my life lately. Um, uh, separating from my husband, moving and selling a, a house. And so it's been a little stressful, but I've found that, um, that my time on the guitar has been kind of an oasis of sanity. It's been a, a therapeutic thing where I'm in control of my world. And I know that as long as I practice, things will get better. And there are very few areas in life where you can say that, but, um, but I've found it very helpful, um, you know, kind of a Zen thing that I can do. I really appreciate Kathy sharing that because it takes courage. It takes courage to say, hey, I've been going through a rough patch and you know what? The acoustic guitar has been there for me. It's the one constant in my life that I can depend on. And I think as guitar geeks, we can all relate to that in one way, shape or form. Now we're gonna, we're gonna hop in the Acoustic Tuesday private jet. I, I hope your bags are packed. We're going to Richmond Hill, New York. We're gonna visit Juan Rodriguez. Here's his guitar arsenal and it comes with a message as well. One man, one guitar, for now. A Yamaha FGX 800C. Just goes to show, he just proves the point that it's not about the size of your guitar collection. It's about having a guitar and feeling pretty darn awesome about it. That's all the requirements you need to get your guitar arsenal featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Well, there actually are some other requirements as well. And this is where we go to my special announcement. I wanna to propose to you a win, win, win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar arsenal or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar arsenal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. 
Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar signal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. Okay, my ghouls and goblins, it's time for a spooky edition of acoustic news you can use. Well, I don't know how spooky it is. Actually, there's one spooky thing. Two spooky things? There's two spooky things on my news list for today. But we're not going to start out in the spooky realm. We're going to start out in the tribute realm. Yes, the tribute realm. John Prine was a student of the Old Town School of Folk Music, whose original location, aside from the very, very original one, but the original established location was 909 West Arm. Armitage Avenue. Well, they just did a tribute to John Prine on that very street. In fact, they honorarily named the street after John. So here's what the post from the Old Town School of Folk Music said. And as I'm reading this, you can check out the pictures of the sign. We couldn't have asked for a lovelier Saturday to unveil honorary John Prine Way alongside Alderman Michelle Smith. Be sure to look up and whistle your favorite John Prine tune when you walk by the corner of Armitage and Dayton. In fact, Armitage used to be a hotbed of folk music, and John Prine was very much a part of that. So what a fitting tribute to one of the best, one of the greatest songwriters of all time, if not the greatest songwriter of all time. Moving on down the news, the news list here, uh, this is where the Halloween theme comes into play. Now, I have to say this is not a sponsorship. I just wanted to share this with you, my fellow Halloween lovers, my fellow horror movie lovers. I found a new coffee, Dead Sled Coffee. And let's go ahead and first look at a promo for this coffee, and then I want to tell you all about it. Come on, it's the Halloween episode. I had to include it. I mean, I love coffee, I love horror movies. Boom, Dead Sled Coffee meets me right in the middle. Again, this is not a sponsorship. I just purchased some of their coffee recently. They just released this Rob Zombie Hellbilly Brew, and I thought to myself, I need that. And they got me hook, line, and sinker. The bag looks awesome. And usually coffee companies do these tribute batches, and they don't think much about the coffee. It's more about the graphics on the bag. Not the case with these folks. The coffee actually came through. The coffee was the standout winner. I mean, the bag is cool, but the coffee is damn good. So if you like coffee, if you like horror, check out the folks at Dead Sled Coffee. Okay, moving on to my next piece of news. It's just a funny meme that I found. I wanted to share it with you. It's from the folks at Mean Grass Revival on Instagram, and it's simply a, a, a picture of Mike Tyson <laughs> superimposed over Billy Strings, and the text reads, Billy Strength. And I just, I, I was almost in tears laughing at this, so I wanted to share it with you. But speaking of Billy Strings, I do have some pertinent news. Billy Strings just had a new guitar day. Congratulations to Billy Strings. He was at Groon Guitars in Nashville going through a bunch of vintage Martins, and he selected a 1944 Martin D28. Here's a picture of him holding it, and you might be thinking, that's cool. Congratulations, Billy. But how does it sound? Don't worry, I got your back. Here's a clip of Billy Strings playing that very guitar.
And on those sweetly played notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But yes, indeed, we do have to take a sneak peek into next week. Next week on the show, we're going to check out some of the most mind-blowing acoustic guitar covers ever performed. Yes, popular songs performed on the acoustic guitar in a mind-blowing fashion. Your mind's either going to be blown or your jaw's going to be on the floor. Or, or maybe both. These covers are seriously... Well, they're just, they're, they're gonna leave you speechless. They, they might even leave me speechless, which is a feat in and of itself. So make sure to check out Acoustic Tuesday next Tuesday, actually every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. Right before you go, I do wanna remind you of one thing. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And until next Tuesday, cheers to you and Guitar Geeks Unite. Mm -hmm.